Hello and welcome back to Summer Soul Food Study of the Book of Proverbs. This is session three and now we get into the actual Proverbs of Solomon starting at chapter 10 and going up into the about uh, chapter 20. So for about 10 chapters now we're going to study the actual Proverbs of Solomon and here you're going to see a change in the language and uh, this is where you get your contrast and your comparisons, a typical two, two uh, line proverb. Um, and then the, the first one sets it up and then the second one either agrees with it or contrasts to it. And you're going to see that typically as we go through. Uh, starting in chapter 10, um, I, I, I'm going to go through, I, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to load up each chapter um, in, in one screen, but we may have to do multiple screens. So we'll see how that works. Um, and um, if, if you're necessary, if I skip a screen or whatever, just hit your space bar and it should continue or we'll do that in the video. All right, here in uh, chapter 10, the first one I want to talk about um, uh, here, the theme of this particular part is, notice that the mouth and the chattering fool, the mouth, the mouth, the mouth, um, this is so consistent uh, with uh, ancient wisdom and with the wisdom that comes to us from the New Testament about, um, especially from the book of James, um, about uh, the idea of that, that the tongue is, is the smallest muscle, but extremely strong and creates, no one can, can master the tongue. Um, part of the idea of wisdom here in Solomon is that a wise person manages their their language. Uh, they know when to speak and when not to speak uh, as compared to a chattering fool, someone who just talks a lot. Um, uh, they really get on your nerves and they, uh, they can uh, stir up a lot of strife and a lot of anger. Uh, and so the, the idea here is uh, wisdom uh, is, is knowing when to speak and when not to speak. All right, I'm going to skip over this section here in this section and go to chapter 11. And now we see a different type of, of uh, uh, emphasis on this particular chapter, and it's pride and righteousness uh, and integrity. Uh, pride and hum as, as opposed to humility uh, and uh, righteousness is seen as opposite of wickedness. Uh, and integrity is is uh, honesty. And so the Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favor with him. And then you get down to, um, uh, the, but the wicked are brought down by their own wickedness. The righteous and the delivers them, but the faithful are trapped by evil desires. The righteous person is rescued from trouble and it falls on the wicked instead. Um, with their mouths, the godless destroy their neighbors, but through knowledge, the righteous escape. So the idea here is honesty and integrity and righteousness. Now, in, in the Old Testament, righteousness means being right with God. Uh, that's a behavior. Uh, and so the idea here is uh, righteousness is being in a right relationship with God and living that out on a day to day basis. So now in chapter 10, uh, I want to go uh, continue here um, and, and look at this part. Uh, this is one that we've seen and heard in a number of different um, circumstances. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. Um, I think that this is an extremely important little proverb for us. Uh, because as a pastor, I'm going to talk about how we have a lack of guidance in our nation today. Uh, I, I enjoy studying history. And uh, prior to World War II and just immediately after World War II, even as bad as things were for everybody in our country, there was still an agreed upon sense of moral direction. And that came to us through God's word. Uh, that came to us through our Christian faith. And during that time, uh, a, a, a large portion of the American people were active in the Christian faith. And so there was uh, a, a, an agreed upon set of moral principles. That has fallen by the wayside, I'm afraid. 
Um, uh, less than a third of Americans are active in any community of faith. And on any given weekend, according to the latest statistics, less than 20% of Americans attend any kind of a worship service on any weekend. So we have lost that sense of a unified understanding of guidance. And now it's whatever is right for me is right for me, and whatever is right for you is right for you. And uh, that has caused us to, I think, decline as a nation. Um, and right there is, is that little proverb that uh, says a lot. Uh, for lack of guidance, a nation falls. A king who is not following the admonitions of God, but victory is won through many advisors, mainly the advice of God. Now, in this section, there was a couple little ones that I wanted to lift up, and this has to do with giving. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And this is an idea here that it goes way back, and that is something that Jesus talks about and something that the New Testament talks about quite often is generosity versus, um, 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 for lack of another word, stinginess. Um, and in here, the proverb Solomon says, you know, a, a generous person, um, uh, I like that word, refreshes others. Um, a, a generous person is like a stream. Uh, and uh, you give life to other people in being generous. And then at the end of this uh, uh, passage, uh, this was one that I, I really wanted to look at. Whoever brings ruin on their family will inherit only wind, and the fool will be servant to the wise. Um, those people who are not wise, who, who uh, what's the word I want, uh, spend, fritter away, whatever, uh, the, the, the wealth of their family and brings their family into ruin, uh, in, inherit nothing because it's all gone. Uh, the idea here is, is you're going to end up serving somebody else rather than yourself. Um, the importance of family, of caring for family and maintaining the family wealth um, is very, very important here. And here's another pause. Righteousness is being right with God. Is that one of your goals as a disciple of Christ? When have you ever experienced gaining more, not just monetarily, by being generous? And how do you feel when we are corrected or disciplined? Are you open to learning new things? Is the practice of gleaning a good idea for today? How can we promote justice in food distribution? Talk about those questions for a few minutes and then pick back up. All right, and here we are with chapter 12. And uh, there's a number of them here. And if the, the print is kind of small, I'm sorry about that, but I'm trying to get as much on a screen as possible. But here, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge and whoever hates correction is stupid. Here's that contrast again. The first line, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. In other words, if you love being taught, that's what discipline means is being taught. Uh, that means that you, you love knowledge. You understand the importance of knowledge. But whoever hates correction is stupid. The idea there is if you don't want to be corrected, if you don't want to be taught how to do things properly or how to live properly or how to behave properly, uh, you are exhibiting uh, stupid. Um, and this is a word I want to talk about for just a minute because this is just me. There's a difference between ignorance and stupid. Ignorance is simply a lack of facts. You don't know the facts, okay? Stupid is, I don't know the facts and I don't care. I don't want to know. Ignorance doesn't necessarily mean that you're stupid. It simply means that you don't have the knowledge. But the idea there is you're still open to gaining knowledge. Stupid is you don't have the knowledge and you're not open to gaining the knowledge. And so that's an important word right there. But whoever hates correction is stupid. Um, and that's a word that we don't hear very often. And uh, I think it's an important word to understand 
in some of these proverbs. Um, here's another one. I like this. A wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. Now, remember, this was written by men, uh, for men, but I think that translates in our modern society. A, a husband of noble character is her wife's crown. I would say an even protector. Uh, but a disgraceful husband is like decay in her bones. Um, uh, it's just you can you can change the words there, and the the wisdom there is still just uh, is, is appropriate. Uh, you you want your spouse to have noble character um, because that carries over into your reputation. Uh, a person is praised according to their prudence, and one with a warped mind is despised. Um, and that go, kind of goes into another one. I, I think we haven't gotten to it yet, that a good name is to be desired above all things. A person is praised according to their prudence. Um, prudent people who make good decisions and are, are who make carefully uh, thought out decisions and considered decisions uh, are, are, are praised. They're thought highly of. Uh, the people who, who don't make good decisions, I like that, a warped mind. Uh, is despised. The righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. This is an interesting little proverb uh, that uh, talks about righteousness and the needs and care of animals. Uh, the righteous understand that animals are part of God's world, and uh, to be cruel to an animal that is an innocent animal uh, is, is wickedness. Um, we've got a real problem in our country with cruelty to animals, and we see it a lot in the news. Um, uh, you just, you can't, I can't fathom hurting an innocent animal. Um, it's just, I just don't get it. Um, but there, there's that little proverb that I like that. That's kind of neat. Verse 18, the words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Now, there's a, a nice little contrast between wounding and healing. The words of the reckless wound, uh, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Uh, how you use your words uh, in speaking to another person can either wound or heal. Um, 23, the prudent keep their knowledge to themselves, but a fool's heart blurts out folly. Now, this is an interesting little proverb. The prudent keep their knowledge to themselves. Uh, that goes back to some of the earlier um, uh, proverbs that we had in setting up, is that um, those who are wise don't try to correct people who uh, are simple or who are not wise because it's not appreciated. Uh, and so they, they learn to keep their knowledge to themselves unless asked. Um, I remember uh, being on the golf course sometimes, and I, I would play with the strangers, just anybody get paired up. And I played with a guy one day that uh, told me everything I was doing wrong. And, and by the end of that 18 holes, I was so glad to get out of his company. Um, you know, you just sometimes uh, people that just, you know, you know, blah, 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 you know they're, they're they know it all. Uh, you don't want to be around them. Uh, the prudent know when to keep their knowledge to themselves and when it is invited then to share what they know. Uh, and 27, I like the words of this. Uh, the lazy do not roast any game, but the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. Uh, this is going to, you're going to see this another uh, as a, a, a theme going forward is the difference between laziness and and getting up and doing what you need to do to take care of yourself and your family. Um, I like that. The lazy do not roast any game, but the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. Uh, sloth and laziness are, are, are the opposite of righteousness. So be, be aware of that. All right, here we are with chapter 13. Uh, and I, I want to pick up just a couple of the... Uh, verses here. Um, Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Uh, the idea there is trying to get rich quick, and the temptation to do that oftentimes then leads one to uh, uh, be dishonest in how one gets there, uh, uh, either through swindling or through uh, some other way. 
Uh, and, and that's a problem that I have with our lottery system is that it feeds on that desire to get rich quick and not have to do any hard work to learn, earn it. Uh, and, and the wisdom here of Solomon is that money that is earned may not come in in great uh, amounts, but over time, uh, it becomes real wealth uh, that is worth having and that makes one uh, uh, wealthy. And, and so uh, uh, I find that that's an interesting little comment there. Uh, then at the end of that over there, an unplowed field produces food for the poor, but injustice sweeps it away. Now, this goes back to uh, 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 Leviticus, where chapter 19 in Leviticus, uh, and that is uh, one of the chapters where we have a variety of different laws but in there, it tells people that once they have harvested what they can get out of their field, leave the rest for the poor. And we call that gleaning. Uh, in the United Methodist Church, we actually have a, min a gleaning ministry called the Society of St. Andrews. And what they do is they work with farmers. And once the farmers have collected what they want out of the field, then we glean the field and get that to uh, food banks and to other people that help provide food for the poor. Uh, oftentimes the poor can't get to the field nowadays, uh, but the way that that was is in the ancient world, uh, you were to leave uh, your field uh, once you had gotten what you wanted uh, for the poor uh, to be able to uh, uh, glean the field and have food. But the idea here is that injustice then sweeps that away. Injustice meaning then that you might plow under the, the good food or you might uh, go back over the field again and pick up stuff. But the idea there is injustice sweeps it away. And I wanna talk about that for just a minute because it's just an interesting thing in our world. We have people starving all over the world, everywhere, in our country, in other countries, um, people are starving. Yet what's interesting about it is there is enough food produced worldwide to feed every man, woman, and child five to six pounds of food a day, a day, everybody. But what is keeping it away is our distribution systems, which um, uh, oftentimes crossing uh, state lines or crossing uh, country lines, um, the, the distribution is not fair. Um, the, the rich take what they want and give the rest. I saw an example of that, especially in third world countries. When I was in the Navy, uh, I had the opportunity to visit Indonesia and Malaysia and uh, saw abject poverty for the first time in my life. And I was in Jakarta and I was walking around the city and enjoying the sights and everything. And it came across this huge, massive, massive mansion that covered an entire city block and was surrounded by about a 10, 12 foot, 15 foot wall. Well, when I got around to the back of that mansion, coming out of the back wall was a stream. And living on that stream were thousands of people in corrugated tin huts and they had no electricity, and that stream was their running water. And they drank out of that stream, they washed their clothes in that stream, they went to the bathroom in that stream. That stream turned out to be the sewage from that mansion. Uh, that was the first time I ever experienced that. And so there is an injustice there in the distribution system um, of, of goods, especially for the poor, all right? Um, that's the idea there that is being expressed in this. An unplowed field produces food for the poor, but injustice sweeps it away. So there's, there's a strong emphasis there on taking care of the poor in our Proverbs. Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Um, we, we talked about that a little bit in the last uh, session about sparing the rod and, and corporal punishment. I, I got spanked when I was a kid. Um, it, it wasn't often, um, but when I 
broke the rules that I know were rules, and I broke them knowing that I was breaking them uh, and got caught at it and um, continued to do that. In other words, not just the first time. Uh, my dad was pretty amazing about that. I, I remember saying, he said, it's okay, just don't do it again. Um, but when I did it again and again and again and again, then, uh, okay, uh, you, you need to understand that this is not acceptable behavior, and I got spanked. Um, Mom and Dad were always very careful in the way they did it, but um, I, got, I got let known that this was not acceptable um, and, and that there was a cost to my behavior. Um, I don't hate my mom and dad because they spanked me. Um, yes, it was painful. Yes, it was, um, um, uh, it uh, affected me. Um, but I also learned that you, you simply cannot act a certain way. So we'll, we'll deal with that a little bit later. All right, here we are in chapter 14. And um, here's some uh, uh, some more really good uh, little proverbs. I, I really want to encourage you to continue to read all of these. They're all very good, uh, but they just kind of flow from one thought to the next. There's not necessarily a, a really good theme in each chapter, but uh, there's some really nice ones here that I just want to pick out. Uh, to begin with, the wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. Um, and uh, I, this is just an interesting, and then to tie that, whoever fears the Lord walks uprightly, for those who despise him are devious in their ways. Uh, again, the fear of the Lord is that is that word there. Um, I, I, I'm afraid that we don't have the fear of the Lord in us, in our modern society. Uh, Stay away from a fool, for you will not find knowledge on their lips. Uh, my mother had a phrase, a phrase that uh, just, used to get on my nerves every now and again when she was talking about uh, pick your friends wisely. She said, birds of a feather fly together. And uh, she, she would, she, you know, my parents were pretty strong about who am I hanging around with? Uh, and uh, if that person was not somebody that uh, they wanted me to be with, they let me know. Uh, because what happens is you become uh, more and more like this person that you hang around. Stay away from a fool for you will not find knowledge on their lips. Uh, verse 12, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. Now, this is interesting, and this is, comes up several times. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. The idea there is appearances are not always wise, and we need to be more diligent in making sure of the, we're making the right decision. And the one that appears to be right sometimes is the easiest, and sometimes it's uh, uh, the, the first one that comes to our mind. Uh, but we need to be more diligent. Uh, I like 15. The simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. Um, uh, the simple believe anything. Boy, there's stuff out there. <laughs> I hear all kinds of stuff. There's, but the prudent give thought to their steps. Uh, you, you need to be careful what you believe and why. Um, and I, I'm a, that's why I teach is because um, I want people as Christians to know what we believe and why we believe it and why it matters. Uh, verse 22, it is a sin to despise one's neighbor, but blessed is the man who is kind to the needy. Uh, chapter 23, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. <laughs> uh, you can talk a great story, but unless you're working it, and, and don't be afraid of hard work. Uh, hard work produces a lot of quality stuff uh, and produces character. Uh, uh, I, I've been very, very blessed in my life that I, since I was about 15 years of age, I have never been without a job. And uh, I can remember as a young man when I was managing movie theaters, I worked anywhere from 70 to 80 hours a week. Um, and uh, you just, you know, you've got to, it's called paying your dues. Uh, hard work produces a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Uh, verse 30, a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Um, very, very interesting here that a heart at peace, um, peace is, is something that we talk about a lot in the Christian faith, that Jesus gives us peace uh, because we are, are reconciled with God. We're no longer uh, enemies with God. 
but envy, uh, envy, strife, jealousy, all of the other uh, negative emotions that we experience. Uh, the, the image there is it rots the bones. Uh, how you feel can have a lot of effect on your health. Uh, and uh, having good feelings and practicing that and being in a place where you uh, have peace in your life uh, actually produces better health. Uh, verse 31, whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. God makes the rich and the poor. Jesus made the comment, you will always have the poor. There's always going to be people who simply do not have the means, the ability, uh, the resources, uh, the mental capacity uh, to produce for themselves. Uh, and if you oppress them, if you take advantage of that person, uh, you're showing contempt for God because God made them. They are made in the image of God. Uh, and so we need to be kind to the needy. Now, that doesn't mean that we enable them to stay needy or stay stay poor. Uh, but uh, we need to be we need not to oppress them, uh, not use them uh, in a way that harms them. Thirty four righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. Uh, this is a very strong corporate identity that the Israelites had was that if one Israelite sinned, the whole nation of Israel had sinned. Uh, we don't have that in the United States. We're very uh, individually oriented. Um, but in the ancient world, there was a very strong corporate identity. Um, and so the idea here is that righteousness exalts a nation. If the people live righteously, the nation will be exalted. Um, and I believe that we've experienced that in our country in the early days. Uh, when we were a godly people and we lived by the Bible, we lived by our faith, uh, but sin condemns any people. Uh, when we sin, when we fail to be obedient to God, um, it, it, anybody can fall to that and no nation can stand to that. All right, here we are with chapter 15. And there's just a few here that I want to talk about. This one, uh, I think, you know, uh, we have heard it many times. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Um, uh, let me just give you a real, honest, confessional example of this proverb. I used to have a really bad road rage problem. I did. And I was in Charleston and I was driving from West Ashley down to the hospital to visit somebody. And I was dressed in my clergy collar and ready to go visiting. And I was moving from the right lane to the left lane. And I gave the van behind me a turn signal. And before I could get over in the left lane without any warning or any signal, the van moved over into the left lane and passed me. He cut me off. So. He eventually went around me and got into the right lane and I've got over in the left lane and we both happened to get to the to the light at the same time. And I rolled down my window and I said, what is your problem? And he replied to me, he says, you want a piece of me? And I answered back anytime, anywhere. And he said, pull over to the next parking lot. And so we pulled over. I got out of my car and he took one look at the clergy caller and says, I'm not hitting the minister. And he got back in his car and walked away. <laughs> if I, God watches over children and fools. And I was a fool at that moment. Uh, a gentle answer turns away wrath. Uh, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And anger leads us to sin. And so we need to... If somebody is angry with us, you don't return anger with anger. Uh, find a way to, to uh, turn that anger into something different. All right, verse 23, plans fail for a lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. This is another one that we've uh, I've seen on little uh, 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 devotional boards or scriptures and stuff like that. Verse 22, 23, 22. Uh, plans fail for a lack of counsel, but with many advisors. This is good advice when you're getting ready to do a project. Um, I'm looking at putting a, a canopy over my uh, my patio, and I'm talking to different people and looking at different uh, options that I have. 
um, uh, you know, my wife is a good researcher. And before we do anything, uh, make any kind of a major decision or anything like that, we thoroughly research it. We, we look at, at videos. We look at the Internet stuff. We talk to people. Um, this is this is good wisdom here. Uh, you know, uh, when you're planning something, uh, get a lot of help. More, uh, more heads, the better. All right, verse 31, whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. Uh, this, is, this is interesting. Uh, correction is seen as giving life. Uh, and if you do that, uh, you're going uh, to be wise. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves, but the one who heeds correction gains understanding. And wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord, and humility comes before honor. Um, all of that is very, very excellent. All right, here we are in chapter 16, and uh, a couple that I want to pick up here. Verse 2, all a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Um, Jesus talks about this, about uh, what is your motive for doing something? Uh, and while we may seem think that what we're doing is good, uh, what is the motive behind it? Uh, is the motive good? And those are weighed by the Lord. The Lord, the Lord understands why we do stuff. Uh, and so we need to have the fear of the Lord in us that we are doing things for the right reason. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. There's another one that we hear quite often. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans uh, as uh, as the New Testament puts it, uh, whatever you do, uh, do in the name of the Lord uh, and, and do it as though you were doing it for the Lord. And so that's the idea of commit to the Lord. Uh, I'm doing this, whatever I do, I do for the sake of the Lord. All right. And he'll establish your plans. He will lay out for you where you need to go, what you need to do in order to commit that. Uh, nine, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. That kind of goes right along with uh, verse three. OK, uh, verse uh, 16. How much better to get wisdom than gold to get insight rather than silver? Uh, here again, this is a common theme is that wisdom is extremely valuable and is to be sought at whatever cost. Uh, 25, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. There's a repeat of the same verse that we had several chapters back. Uh, and again, this goes with what may seem pure and what may seem good uh, may not always be the right path. Um, I've learned to get how to do that is to be patient. Um, I'm not a very good patient person, but God has taught me patient. Um, and I've learned that if I am patient, I make better decisions because God's going to provide me with the wisdom. Uh, when I have to make a major decision and I rush into that, I don't make a good decision as if I wait and I pray a lot for wisdom. Lord, help me make the right decision here. Uh, and eventually it comes and you know it when it's right. It just feels right. Um, and and that, that's, that's been something I've had to learn. Uh, 28, a perverse person stirs up conflict and a gossip separates close friends. Um, this is an important thing is the, the we are warned in the New Testament about gossiping. Uh, this, this has to go with wisdom in your, your mouth, uh, keeping your mouth shut. Um, you don't gossip about other people. Um, you, you say what you need to say to somebody to their face. All right, here we are in uh, chapter 17, and um, uh, just a few that I want to pick up. And here, the theme that I'm picking up here is family. Um, uh, <laughs> better a dry crust with peace and quiet than a house of full, full of feasting with strife. Uh, and then children's children are a crown to the aged, and parents are to the pride of their children. To have a fool for a child brings grief, and there is no joy for the parents of a godless son, fool. A foolish son brings grief to his father and bitterness to the mother who bore him. Starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam. So drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. Um, these are some excellent uh, uh, ideas for dealing in a family. Um, and I, I really like the idea of that is 
uh, you need peace in your home uh, and you need for your children and your parents to, to be with one another in a way that is not filled with strife. All right, chapter 18, an unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. And again, that idea of being argumentative um, and uh, uh, that's basically just selfishness. Um, rather than considering any ideas that somebody else has. Um, we, we've gotten to where we just we, we don't want to listen to other people. Uh, we, we care more about saying what I want to say. I think social media has really added a lot to that. Um, um, but there's an important thing there. Before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. Uh, we're familiar with that saying, uh, uh, pride goeth before the fall. Uh, but that's the, that's the, uh, a, a very excellent proverb there that we need. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. Uh, again, this goes back to just, you know, I want to talk and I want to I share my wisdom and my ideas. Uh, and oftentimes we don't listen to hear what the other person has to say. We listen for what can we argue with. Um, and and there's, that's, that, there's a difference. Uh, and I think that, that that's really, uh, really important to answer before listening. Uh, one of the things that I learned in my counseling classes as a pastor was to say back what you heard the person saying. And, you know, what I hear you saying is da 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 da. And, and uh, so the idea is they feel and they understand that you've actually heard what their concern is. Uh, verse 18, a gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. Um, this is a very ancient, and in the ancient days, you sent a gift ahead when you wanted an appointment with someone. Um, I'm not sure how that translates into the modern world, but um, uh, when you go to greet, greet somebody or be with somebody, take a gift with you. Uh, it can do a lot to uh, pave the way for opening a relationship. Um, doesn't have to be expensive, but I, I, I found that to be very interesting. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. In a lawsuit, the first to speak seems right until someone comes forward and cross-examines. This, I think, has to go back to listening to what is said, uh, to answer before listening. Uh, we need to uh, make sure that we're getting all of the information. Uh, I'm afraid in our modern uh, communication system, especially with social media, we don't get all of the facts. Uh, even with our, our media today, uh, our journalists, we don't get all the facts. And uh, it, it's important that we have all the facts uh, before we speak or before we make some kind of a judgment. All right, chapter 19, uh, desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? Um, this is an interesting connection between knowledge and what you desire. Uh, you might desire something, but without knowledge behind that desire, you're going to make some bad decisions. And uh, you, I like that your feet will miss the way. Um, and so that's an important thing. Uh, chapter uh, verse 13, a foolish child is a father's ruin and a quarrelsome wife is like the constant dripping of a leaky roof. <laughs> You can turn, you can put that around just the other way with a different spouse, but I like that is 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 like a constant dripping of a leaky roof. Boy, after a while, that just gets on your nerves. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord, um, because that's your choice. Uh, what you get from your parents, you can't choose, but you get to choose your spouse, and a, a prudent spouse is a gift from the Lord. Uh, discipline your children for that there is hope and do not be willing to party to be a party to their death. Boy, what a statement there that when we don't discipline our children and teach them the right way, we're being a party to their ultimate demise. Um, boy, that's harsh, but think about that. A hot tempered person must pay the penalty, rescue them and you will have to do it again. <laughs> Uh, I go back to that incident with my road rage. I had to learn to, to let things go. 
uh, and it's true. You keep rescuing somebody who's got a hot temper, you're going to have to keep doing them rescuing over and over and over again. Just let them suffer their own penalty. I, I like that. A hot-tempered person must pay the penalty. Don't rescue them. Let them learn from that. I did. Whoever robs their father and drives out their mother is a child who brings shame and distress. Uh, honor your father and your mother that you may live long in the land that your father is giving you. Um, we, we have to teach our children to honor our father and our mother. And it's, it's an interesting sermon that I uh, heard um, a Lutheran pastor uh, in Saluda when I was there. She did a sermon series on the 10 blessings of the 10 commandments. And on the commandment of honor your mother and father, the blessing that she lifted up to that was that your children learn how to care for you and honor you by how you honor and care for your parents, their grandparents. Uh, and remember that in that day and time, uh, families live together. Uh, grandparents, great-grandparents, grandchildren, they all lived in the same household. And so watching uh, a parent care for their parent uh, taught the child how to care for their parents. Um, that's the blessing that you get. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. All right, here's some more questions to ponder. What ideas about honesty did you hear from Solomon? What did you learn about communicating? What should we not say? And how much more should we spend time listening? Is discipline a child important? What are some of the warnings in not doing it and advantages of doing it? And why is it so hard for us to wait on the Lord instead of getting revenge? And then lastly, think about how pride and arrogance are mocking God. Take a moment and discuss those questions among yourselves, and then you can pick back up. All right, uh, chapter 20, and this is just a, a, a few that I want to pick up here. I'm beginning to run out of time, I think. Wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. I like the analogy there and the, the personification. Wine is a mocker and a beer is a brawler. Uh, and it says a lot about uh, the drinking. Do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will avenge you. Uh, again, I think that uh, that is uh, goes back to some other uh, phrases that we've heard uh, that Jesus said, do not do not uh, uh, do evil against evil or wrong against wrong. All right. Chapter 21, uh, verse two, a person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. We've said that before. We've had that in there. And I wanted to pick that up that it gets it, 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 it gets picked up again. Uh, better to live on a corner of a roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife or husband or spouse. OK, whoever loves pleasure will become poor. Whoever loves wine and olive oil will never be rich. The wise store up choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp theirs down. Kind of goes together there, doesn't it? it has to do with desire, uh, not being um, frugal, not being what's the word I want where we uh, uh, limit our desires. Um, and so the idea there is is uh, 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 be be limiting in what we do. I love ice cream and I can eat tons and tons of ice cream. And I'm having to learn that if I'm going to be successful in keeping my weight down, I have to have just a tiny little bowl of ice cream and quit going back for seconds. All right. The proud and arrogant person, mocker is his name, behaves with insolent fury. So whenever you see that word mocker well, all, all through this, that's the idea of what it is. It's a proud and arrogant person who's, who mocks God who mocks the wisdom of God, who mocks the knowledge of God, who mocks the, the, the discipline of God. That is a mocker, and he behaves in insolent fury. All right, here's chapter 22, and this is one that I, I think I quoted earlier, and uh, uh, one that gets quoted quite a lot. Uh, a, a good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Um, a good name, a reputation, um, and and it, it can take forever to build a good reputation and one stupid mistake to ruin it. Uh, 
we've seen that with politicians. We've seen that with leaders. We've seen that uh, with business people. Um, you have to guard your reputation with knowledge. Um, and uh, uh, I just can't say that enough. Uh, rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is maker of them all. That goes back to don't oppress the poor because they've been made in the image of God. Uh, this is uh, one that gets quoted in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Start children off on the way should, they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Uh, this is one of the scripture passages that gets misquoted. Um, the one in the New Testament says, uh, teach a child in the way should they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. Well, what gets quoted is, teach away the child that they should go, and they will not part from it. That's not what the scripture says. And even here, what it says is when they are old, they will not turn from it. Uh, we forget that you and I are rebellious by nature. And uh, it is normal for a child to question uh, things from parents. Teenagers especially are at that point where they're trying to figure out their own way. Uh, and they're going to depart from things that mom and dad have taught them. Um, but the idea is if you've done a good job of teaching it and doing the job of training them, uh, they will see the wisdom eventually and they will come back to that. Uh, the idea may be when they're older, but we're all going to make mistakes. But the idea there is you set the standard uh, and your child will eventually um, will be there. And that goes to verse 15. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. <laughs> All right. So let's talk just a minute about what did you hear um, or what did you read that uh, I didn't actually lift up. But there's a couple things that I want to ask you to, to consider. What ideas about honesty, household, wealth and speech uh, did you hear from Solomon? Um, what were the things that uh, you found to be interesting or helpful uh, or things that uh, were new to you or whatever? So take a moment to talk about the, the specifically the ones that we've been talking about from, from uh, Solomon the King. <laughs> 